Hi, so here we are having finally made it to the last section of the course. In this section, we will be discussing secondary indexes and see how to perform multiple types of reads along with database queries and its best practices among other things. So let's get started with indexes. Well, as in conventional databases, secondary indexes are created to ease our search based on non-key columns and save us from scanning the whole table. Now, index creation can take from several minutes to many hours. The time needed to create a secondary index depends on the size of the data set, the number of nodes in the instance, and the load on the instance. Now, to create an index, you simply name the index and specify the table and columns you're creating an index on. For example, we're creating an index on first and last name of our customer's tip. So we use the create index statement to define a secondary index in the schema. Now adding a secondary index to an existing table requires a schema update. Cloud Spanner populates the index with data under the hood, also known as backfills. The process of backfilling might take some time to execute. However, it saves from having to get database offline or locking some columns from writes and updates. Now let's have a look at the Python code where we are creating an index. Once our index is created, we should be able to see the index in the console. Okay, so here is my Python code where I have the function of add index. What I'm doing is that in my sales DB, I'm creating an index on my customers. And the index is customer by first last name. And we're taking the columns first name and last name from the customers and creating an index with them. So it is quite a simple operation. And I'll be executing the code in my command line. So I'll be running Python secondary index dot by and I'll be waiting for the index to get created. So once my index is created, I can go to my console and actually check it that if the index has been created. Now index creation is essentially a schema update. So it takes some time because I already have data in my DB. So it should create the index and then do the process of backfilling to update the indexes. Okay, so it tells me that added the customers by first last name index. I can go to my table and I'll just refresh it and I should be able to see the index on my customers table. And here it is the customers by first last name and it tells me the columns which are indexed and the sort order is ascending. Even if I click on show Kelvin detail, it will show me how the index was created. Okay, so now that we have seen the creation of index, let's move on to interleaved indexes. Now, Cloud Spanner supports both non interleaved and interleaved indexes. Non interleaved indexes are the default and quite similar to what we get in traditional RDBMS. Now, they're, however, not always the best choice in Spanner. Spanner prefers defining interleaved over columns that share a prefix with the parent table and allow greater control of locality. Now, Cloud Spanner stores index data in the same way as tables with one row per index entry. Non interleaved indexes thus store data in root tables. Now, because root tables can be split between any root row, this ensures that non interleaved indexes can scale to any size and to almost any workload. Now, interleaved indexes, on the other hand, store data in interleaved tables and are suitable when you are searching within the domain of a single entity. Interleaved indexes force data and index entries to remain in the same row tree, making joins between them far more efficient. Now let's have a look at an example of interleaved index, which I'll be showing you in code, where we will index the products bought by a particular customer in our sales DB. Okay, so here we will look at how to add an interleaved index. So basically in this case, we are having an index products by customer ID, which will give us all the products, the product IDs, which a certain customer has bought over in the past. So the index is on the table line items and the columns we're taking are the customer ID and the product ID. We're interleaving that in customer's table because customers is then sort of the pairing table for our index. So this is how we create an interleaved index. So let's run my code. And I should be able to see that an interleaved index is created. Okay, so now our code operation is completed and it has added line items by customer product index. So I can go to my Chrome. Actually, 
refresh it to see if my index has been added. And here I can see that yes, an index has indeed been added and it is interleaved in the customer's table. Now while queuing from database based on an index, if all the data requested is in the index itself, it can be consulted on its own without reading the primary record. This can save significant resources as no join is required. However, if it's not in the index, the spanner uses a join to fetch the other data from the base table. To optimize performance when reading from indexes, Cloud Spanner can store the column value of the table row in the index itself, removing the need to read the table and thus preventing joins. This is known as a covering index. So how do we achieve a covering index? This is done by using the storing clause when defining the index. Storing a column in an index results in its values being duplicated with the copy stored in the index. The values of the column can then be read directly from the index, so reading from the index performs as well as reading from the table. Now this provides advantages for queries and read calls using the index at the extra cost of extra storage. Now SQL queries that use the index and select columns stored in the storing clause do not require an extra join to the base table. And read calls that use the index can read columns stored in the storing clause. Now here we are and we will use the example of addition of a storing index. And let's look at our code. What we're doing is that we're creating an index customers by first last name stored on customers table. And we are actually creating an index with the first name and last name column from the customer. So once this index has been created, we're also storing the email column in the index. So it is sort of a storing index that is, if we later on need to query the email column, we can easily query using this storing index. So let's move on to my command line and run the Python secondary index would be my command. And I should be able to see after a while that my storing index has been created. Okay, so here we can see that we have added the customers by first last name storing index. And let's go on to my console again and refresh it to check if my index has indeed been created on the customers table, of course. So I'll move on to customers table and here is my storing index, which stores an additional column of email in the index. Now by default, Spanner will index rows using null indexed column values. A null is considered to be the smallest possible value, so these values will appear at the start of the index. Now it's also possible to disable this behavior by using the create null filtered index syntax, which will create an index ignoring rows with null indexed column values. This index will be smaller than the complete index and will be faster to query than the full table when a table scan is necessary. Now you can use a unique index to enforce that a column of a table has unique values. This constraint will be applied at transaction commit time and at index creation. Specifically, any transaction that would use multiple index entries for the same key to exist will fail to commit. Unique indexes add a constraint to the data being indexed that prohibits duplicate entries for a given index key. If a table contains non-unique data in it to begin with, attempting to create a unique index on it will fail. Now, Cloud Spanner's query engine will only automatically use indexes in rare circumstances when it is fully covered by the index. So it is important to use a force index directive in the SQL statement to ensure that Cloud Spanner looks up values from the index. An index directive is used to force an index. If you want Cloud Spanner to query a table, my table using the index, my table index, you must indicate the index name using an index directive in the SQL state. The syntax for the index directive is shown. For SQL queries that use an index directive, Cloud Spanner's SQL query processor might need to read columns that are required by the query but that are not stored in the index. The query processor retrieves these columns using the join between the index and the base table. Let's have a look at an example of query using an index. Okay, so here we are and uh, we'll be queuing data with index in this function. And we can see that we're selecting the customer ID, first name and email from the customer table. We're forcing uh, it to query through index. And our condition is that first name should be greater than asthma. 
So let's go and run my secondary index Python code. So here we can see that we have gotten all the rows where, you know, the first name is greater than Asma. Okay, now that we have queried the data using an index, we'll be reading data with index and normal index and we'll be reading data with storing index. So let's have a look at our code for reading data with index. So we are specifying a key set where you span our key set all equal to true that we are selecting all the keys and then we have the results snapshot.read and we'll be reading the table customers where we'll be getting want to get the output for columns customer ID, first name, last name and index should be customers by first last name. So this was read table with read data with index and if you want to read data with storing index also be reading an email column and we'll be using the index customer by first last name stored because email column wouldn't be returned if you're not using a storing index. So let me just modify my code for reading data with index and reading data with storing index and go to my terminal and run the code again. Okay, so that is the output of my first read and that is the output of my second read where I'm getting an email. Now, let's go on to the index creation best practices as we've seen how indexes work in Spanner. In traditional RDBMS, the table and the index are managed by a single node. So the index can point directly to the on-disk row of the table. In Cloud Spanner, indexes are actually implemented using tables, which allows them to be distributed and enables the same degree of scalability and performance as normal tables. However, because of this type of implementation, using indexes to read the data from the table row is less efficient than in a traditional RDBMS. It's effectively an inner join with the original table. So reading from a table using an indexed key turns into this process. You look up the split for the index key. You read index row from split to get the table key. You look up split for the table key and read table row from split to get the row values. And finally, you return the row values. Now that there is no guarantee that the split for the index key is on the same node as the split for the table key, so a simple index query may require cross-node communication just to read one row. Similarly, updating an index table will most likely require a multi-node write to update the table row and the index row. So using an index in Cloud Spanner is always a trade-off between improved read performance and reduced write performance. So finally, we're on to the index creation best practices. So let's start with number one. They do not create a non-interleaved index in a column whose value monotonically increases or decreases. This is because indexes are also created as tables. Therefore, care must be taken when creating indexes and it is recommended that you create indexes only using columns which have a well-distributed set of values, just like when choosing a table key. Next on, you need to avoid high write read timestamp ordered tables and indexes at all cost. Do not use a commit timestamp column as the first part of the primary key of a secondary index. Now use some technique to spread the hotspots, be it interleaving in another table or sharding. In some cases, you'll need to do application level sharding for the indexed columns in order to create a synthetic shard ID column, which can be used in the index to distribute values over the splits. And we, you know, went through the concept of how to create shard IDs in our schema design. Use non-interleave indexes when you need to find rows from anywhere in your database. Prefer interleaved indexes whenever your searches are scoped to a single entity. Make prudent use of storing to trade off read time performance against storage size and write time performance. Use the null filter to control storage costs of sparse indexes and create indexes after you've uploaded your data.